who has a different state of consciousness than you that sees virtues in warfare, and I'm telling you now that you must not have anything to do with warfare, what will happen is you will create confusion. And children born out of your marriage, you'll be trying to tell your children one thing, and your, your husband will be telling your children something else, and the child will grow up with a confused understanding. So therefore, always marry somebody who has the same state of understanding as you. And your children then will be brought up in a household where there is agreement between the mother and the father. So, when it says that the sons, the daughters of Adam, I mean the sons, the daughters of man, which is Adam, went out and began to lay with the sons of God, it means that this new order of individuals was began to make marriages with the old order, the angelic order, and it says, and this produced giants. And this confusion produced such giants as the United States of America, Russia, China. But I thought that's why I got destroyed. No, but there were giants were left. So you read that book, it says there were giants in the earth before then and after then. All the giants were not destroyed. Remember in David's time, he still had to fight Goliath because the giants were still in the earth. Well, this is not to be taken literally. The giants simply mean that whenever a small amount of error takes root in the hearts of enough people, it will grow up to be a giant heresy such as the Roman Church, or such as the American Empire. And that's why it takes the Messiah, David, to destroy these giants with the mystery of the Word of God, that tried stone, which is the wisdom that comes from Christ's mystery. So these giants are still in the earth. The papacy is a giant. These are all ancient old giants that are still walking and tramping around the earth and ruling the earth. And they are confusing the world with their teachings. So what was the point of the flood if we didn't get rid of the giants? The flood was not a geological event. The flood was a war. It's a metaphor for war. That's why the scripture says in Revelation 17, the waters that thou sawest, the waters that overflowed the world in Noah's time was not a geological event. In scripture, see it says here, and he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore world religion sitteth, is uh, peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. In Noah's time, these were the Atlantean wars, and there was world wars flowed over the earth in Noah's time. And that's why the Gospels say, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of becoming the Son of Man. The flood is a flood of conflict, of war, of nations and tongues and tribes flowing over one another. So it's all about the flood, though. No, there was no flood. This Bible is not to be taken literally. This symbolic flood. Even they said that God was the person that, you know, that brought the flood because God brings all the wars in the earth because God is a God of war. Where was it that the tower is called? Isaiah what? 30, 25. 30, it is. It is. It reveals itself to the mind of understanding and conceals itself from the unaided literalist fundamentalist mind. So if we if we um, if we go into Mount Arafat and look for an ark, it's not going to be find it. There couldn't be a boat where all the living creatures on the earth all got in. The ark is a symbol of the vessel of history itself. And that's why there were eight people on the ark. You see, because we have come to the end of the age where the number seven is coming to its perfection right here. The number eight symbolizes the birth of the coming age. When you see in that website the dimensions of the ark, you see that it was built to carry this mystery. Eight symbolizes the fact that when this age is over, when the dove returns, then Noah will open up the ark and everyone who is on the vessel of this age will be able to come out and the waters will have receded from the earth. You see, the waters 
where the dragon lives. Now we can see the dragon, that the dragon lives in the waters. And so we see that the waters are now rising above the earth. The world's getting ready to make war again. It's rising 15 cubics because this is where we are, at the place number seven and eight. And after these wars are over, thank you. After these wars are over, then the ark will open up and everyone who was fated, determined by God to survive the judgments of this age will go out and people the earth. And so it's all metaphor, it's all symbolic. And once you break into the symbolism, then you see the reality. But if you're stuck in the literal interpretation of the scripture, you can see nothing. All you do is just stay in confusion. They do not know the mystery. They know there is a mystery, but they don't know it. God has them in darkness. They're all under a spell because of their association with the elements, the darker elements of the world, because of their connections to injustice and warfare and, and oppressions. Their whole world system, that's why it says, be not a friend of the world. Leave them above the world, but not the world or the things of the world. The Roman church and the hierarchy of all these institutional churches are all connected to the nations and the empires to whom they serve. They say like the Vatican, the Vatican, they have a great library, a library full of books. Yes. Yes. So they have, they have a certain knowledge. They have what? They have some knowledge. Did you see the movie Stigmata? Okay. Stigmata was a movie all about the fact that there were certain priests in the Roman Catholic Church that discovered these books. These books are the Nag Hammadi Library. It's a, it's a collection of 54 separate Gospels and Acts of the Apostles that the Catholic Church knew nothing about. And when these books started to come out of hiding, what they do is they overthrow the authority of the Catholic Church over Christendom. And so the movie talks about how the Catholic Church tried to suppress the publication of this book. But now it's in our hands. So once we begin to read it, it says here, now the Catholic Church knows nothing of these. It just tries to keep it from us from reading. It says, these are the secret sayings which the living Jesus spoke and which Didymus Judas Thomas wrote down. And he said, whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. Jesus said, let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. Well, the Roman church doesn't want anybody seeking. It just wants you to obey its dictates. When he finds, he will become troubled. And when he becomes troubled, he will be astonished and he will rule over the all. Well, it doesn't mean he will rule over the world. It means he will rule over himself and he will not need anyone else ruling over him. Because whoever finds the secret meaning of these things does not need a priest or a bishop or anyone else interpreting God's words for you because you are the vehicle of God's word. You are the living life of God's presence. And that's why it says here, if those who lead you to you say the kingdom of God is in the sky, well then the birds will get to heaven before you. And if they say the kingdom of heaven is in the sea, then the fish will get there first. He said, rather the kingdom is inside of you. And it is outside of you. It is everywhere. When you come to know yourselves, then you will be known when you come to know that this is where Christ dwells. As soon as you understand that Jesus dwells right here, you don't have to wait for Jesus to come. You walk in that light and the earth will change. It says here, then you will become known and you will realize that it is you who are the sons and the daughters of the living Father. But if you will not know yourselves, then you dwell in poverty and it is you 
who are that poverty. Where, where can I get this book? You can get this book in any good bookstore, like East West bookstores or any good uh, spiritual bookstore. You won't get it in a in a fundamentalist uh, Christian bookstore because. So there is there is no literal return of Christ. Yes, there is. You saw Christ fly into the World Trade Center Tuesday morning. You saw Christ shaking the earth. But he's a pacifist, all right? Why would he? Kill because people? you see, when Christ came, the God of War. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Judge of the Earth, commanded us through the teachings of John the Baptist and Paul that the only way that we can survive the judgments that are coming is that if we walk in the way God is showing us. And God is showing us how to walk in the spirit of Christ, pacifists, servants of the planet, lovers of righteousness and truth. So that is what Christ taught. And then when it says that Christ, and it's it's all a an epic myth, but a true myth, and Christ ascended back into his form as king of the universe. And that's why it says in the book of Thessalonians, to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels taking vengeance and fire upon them that disobey the gospel. Well. That is the Lord, and he's not coming out of the sky with angels. He's coming out of the east. He's coming out of Russia. He's coming out of China. He's coming out of uh, Afghanistan, because all of these powers are subject to him. You see, the sign of the ram is a sign of all the symbol, the powers of the east that God has kept unto himself for the day of battle and war. In the west, the scripture says, behold the Lamb of God. So we are the sons of God. We must walk as the lambs of God when the Father rises up in the east as the terrible author of judgment and destruction. And so, yes, indeed, Christ is real. Just as the system is a vehicle for evil doing, isn't the Bin Laden and his people? Absolutely. I mean, a mirror image. That which is in darkness there. So how could Christ be working through them? Well, Christ, God is the author of good and evil. God, see now that I am there me. There is a Satan, though. There is a Satan, and it's you, and it's me. There's only... Say, you see Satan the dragon? No. You see the dragon? Yeah. Once you see the dragon, you know where Satan goes. Can you see the dragon here? Take a look at the continent of Europe. Europe is a great, big, immense dragon with its mouth wide open. Italy is the tongue sticking out of the dragon's mouth. Europe is the head, Scandinavia is the right leg, Asia Minor is the left leg, and all of Asia is the body and the tail of this great immense dragon. Well, the prophets told us that when we came to the end of the age, when the Divine Mother descended into our field of consciousness, she would begin to reveal all the mysteries of the earth. So, if you can see the dragon, you can overcome it. These guys can't see the dragon, and therefore, they don't understand that God is inviting all the armies of the Western world to come into the mouth of the dragon and to meet him in the heart of Asia, where he will then bring the judgments of this age against the armies of the West. That's why we are commanded, and that's why the scripture says that God will do nothing but they first reveal their secrets to their children. And that's what they're doing. The Divine Mother is now revealing her mysteries, and that's why it says in the book of Revelation, I beheld another wonder, behold, a great dragon. And it says, and there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels, but the dragon prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, and he was cast out into the earth, because it is the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Well, well, you'll see. Now, once you see the dragon, you see that the dragon is the elements of the earth, then you understand that God took the earth and created us. So now where does the serpent live? Right here. And that's why the scripture says, if any man curseth Satan, he curseth his own soul. And it says, 
Christ said, know you not that out of our own heart comes all of the wickedness in the world. Out of our own heart comes killing and oppression and lust and adultery and everything that is against the, the, the light comes from within. So the war that is fought in heaven is the war, the only war that we are allowed to engage in is the war between my higher consciousness and my lower. I am the only person that I am allowed to kill. And in killing my old nature, I come alive to my new nature. So even God that, had to have this war himself. Of course. Well, you see, the war that is raging in the world, in the heart and mind of every individual, is now spilling out on the plane of human events, and it's a war between evil and good in the world. And where is the evil seated? Right here. Because these men, if they could see the dragon, they would not be getting ready to go to war in Asia and in Europe as they are. Because the reason they are going out there is because they think evil is out there. They do not realize that the seat of evil is right here. And not having overcome that evil in themselves, all they do is project their own thoughts out into the world and they in going out to fight evil, they don't realize they are going out to fight God. And the only war we're allowed to wage is the war against self. And so this is what God is doing. Now judging Satan, Satan is the collective lower consciousness of humankind. And that's why it says the dragon gives its power to the beast. Well, the beast is a symbol of the political order. The dragon is a symbol of our collective lower consciousness, and we are giving this system power every time we cooperate with it. And that's why Revelation 18 says, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. Do you have access to a computer? I got it. I got it. Thank you. What is your name? Uh, Mike. Michael. Stay out of war. You, when you get your draft notice, a young man, you must tell them no and choose prison. And when you get there, you will be there with ten thousands of other young men who are saying no. We are not supporting. We're not fighting for the beast. We're not. While God is destroying this empire, you just let God do it. You be at harmony with everything that is happening. Be fearless and just say no. They will arrest you. They will persecute you. They will say all manner of evil against you. They will call you a coward and they will call you a traitor. You stand courageous in their face and go to jail. And when this judgment is over, you'll be alive. You'll be alive and you will not be found being killed on the battlefields of Asia and Europe as this age is ending. Because you don't want to be found murdering other human beings. And when you go to jail, I'll see you there. We'll all be there. We'll cram the jails. And when we do, the system will collapse. Yeah, but how do we survive the collapse? We'll survive it because the God said, in six troubles and in seven, he will feed us. You see, that what God is doing is bringing this economic system down so the true economic system can be born. The true economic system is not based on money, it's based on love. Who has all the talent in the world? Poor people. Who knows how to make bread? Poor people. Who knows how to milk cows? Poor people. Who knows how to grow stuff? Poor people. So the rich people will have to come to the poor people if they survive. want, if, not if they want to survive, if they want to join the fellowship of righteousness. And when they come here, you'll see that the poor people are already gathering themselves together as a new nation. And God will provide. We don't have to worry. Out there in the midsection of the United States are thousands of Amish communities that are growing food without electricity. They're on our side. We don't have any worry. When the Messiahs come, we'll know what to do and where to go. And yes, there'll be hardship and there'll be tribulation. But, you know, that's what the scripture says. Even though I go through the shadow of the valley of darkness, I will fear no evil. 
the Lord is with us. He sets a table for us in the presence of our enemies. We'll come out of it. We just have to make sure that we go through the darkness unfearful. Thank you. God bless you. God love bless you all. You. I'll see you all at the wedding. stop somebody from coming in and trying to subjugate the society again? They can't because knowledge is power. Once we have understanding, the provocateurs have no more power. Because the other night we were standing here and some fellow came in and he tried to break up the meeting, you know, by inciting people's passions. And everyone just returned all of this love to this person. And they just stood there and we, and we enjoyed his presence. And finally, he understood that he wasn't in a fearful environment. He got loved right into the fellowship. But the first thing was trying to break it up. And it's the same way. You know, so the baby is more. The baby is inside its mother's life. We're inside the darkness of this age. We're feeling the contraction. We're moving towards the moment. Right? Now, you've been to birth, you've had children. In my little hippie community, we have a lot of home births. They all sit downstairs, wait for the baby to come, drinking tea, and everything. All about the time we think the baby's coming, all of a sudden the contractions stop, and you wait for the next day. So, right now, it seems like the child is getting more and more. The child will be coming in. They come today. They come to one else's party one day. Wow, we're going Scripture says that once God has started the contractions, that the contractions will not stop until the child is born. So the new age is in existence. So all we have to do is just stay attention and come away, and we will see it. Just like you have all of us at some point. All we have to do is hold on to our hats and go away. What are the indicators now that differentiate? Like what's What's the difference between you talking to us now and somebody in your What's same situation? Right? Someone in your same situation saying this at the beginning of the Civil War, or World War One, or World War Two, you know, because each time there's a major catastrophe, well, that's exactly there's, always, right. a, but there's always somebody saying that the end is coming. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and I could be just as short-sighted as all of them. But the Scripture says, if anyone says to you that this will happen and it doesn't happen. Well, then just disregard that person and just don't pay attention to it. However, the scripture says that the day of the Lord will not come until the dragon appears, the towers fall. You're familiar with that scripture, right? Okay. Take your word. I take your word. Well, I'll show it to you. I want to see You see, once you see the dragon, then you begin to see what God is doing. And it says, and the day of the Lord will not come until the Antichrist shall indeed. Now it says here, in that day the Lord with his saw and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, the crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Once you can see the dragon, you can see that God is now coming against him. You see the dragon? You see the continent of Europe? Europe is a great big immense dragon with its mouth wide open. Italy is Italy is the tongue sticking out of the dragon's open mouth. Europe is the head of this dragon. Scandinavia is the right limb. Asia Minor is the left limb and all of Asia is the body and the tail of this great dragon with its mouth wide open. You don't see it. Yet. You don't. Okay. The prophets told us that when we came to the end of the age, the dragon would surface from the sea, which means it would come up out of the consciousness of nature into human consciousness, and everyone who could see it could overcome. It, could so you're saying that this is a recent landmass phenomenon? No, it's always, it's always been hidden there in the consciousness of the planet. We've always seen it, but the Divine Mother, who is wisdom, she's the creator herself, is now descending to us and opening up the lotus of human understanding and we are now able to attain to divine consciousness and so we can see it and once you can see it 
you can see that now God is getting ready to bring a judgment against the institutions and powers of the Western world. And then it says right here, the very next page, and there shall be upon every high mountain, which means every great nation, and upon every high hill, rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. See that? Okay. And moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. This means that God, who is both mother and father, moon and sun, will begin to restore balance to the, to the, to the planet. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, and this is where we are, observing the high holy days here in the great seventh month of the holy year. The light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their womb. So here we are. This is the end of the age. This is the beginning of the coming age. This is the male side of the tree of life, which is Christianity. This is the feminine side of the tree of life, which is Judaism. And now, from the Luna or the Jewish side of the tree of life is coming the Messiahs, the anointed ones. And the light of the sun and the light of the moon shall be as the same light. And God will now begin to heal the breach that exists between all of our various religious traditions. Well, if you can see that the ancient prophets said that there were two great creatures that would rise up in the last days. One of them would be the dragon. I hear a, a child's voice. Is that what it is? The child shall lead them. It says here. And it shall come to pass, when all is accomplished that was to come to pass in those parts, that the Messiah shall begin to be revealed. And Behemoth shall reveal revealed from his place, and Leviathan the dragon shall ascend from the sea. These two great monsters which I have created on the fifth day of creation, and has shall kept them to the end, and they shall be food for everyone who survives. Well, there's the dragon. But, if you look at the continent of North America, you see that North America is a great ox, a great behemoth. See, Alaska is the head. There's the horn of the ox. All of Canada is the four quarters of this ox. ox. The United States of America is the strength, the loins of this great behemoth. And Mexico, of course, is the tail. And the prophets told us that when we come to the end of the age, Behemoth and Leviathan would go to war. The great ox and the great dragon. And I think I have a, an allusion to that in here. Uh, maybe I don't. Uh, but it's on that website. And so, what is happening now is that these two great creatures, this is Job 40 and this is Job 41. See, because these creatures are very old and Job is the oldest of the prophets. And Job was an ancient shaman. And he was sitting there in the misery of his own existence and God elevated his consciousness. And he was able to take a spiritual flight into the heavens, the upper worlds, and he was able to look down and see the dragon and see the ox. And when you look in the book of Job, you'll see his description of these two great creatures. And it's, it's all there. So anyway, um, all of these things are unfolding. And as they do, we must realize that it's not for us to fear, but us to realize that this is God's doing. And therefore, we can remain fearless. Well, not necessarily fearless, we're shaken but nevertheless not lose hope when we see the calamity of the rest of the world unfold because it's all ordained by God. You know, it's a very terrible thing. That's why God said that we were sending Messiahs, the anointed ones, to deliver us up out of the judgments of this age. 
because you see, God doesn't judge this age, then all the unrighteousness and the injustice will continue. So everything we see is all happening for the good of the planet. And even if see, all of those people that you see perished, but there were many of God's children, many true Christian people, people who loved God, loved one another. Well, the minute that death took them over, they were not there. They were on the other side. They were in heaven. They were with God in heaven. So even though it looks like calamity to us, in the reality, it was their way of passing over to the other side. And they were just helping God bring about this quickening. Of, yes. Yes. Now, what's your name? Cherry. Cherry. Can I go? Yeah. Lucia. Lucia. Oh, that's good. <laughs> what is this? The apocalypse? What is that? The, the apocalypse. Black one. What is that? Uh, this is the fourth, it's a King James Version of the 14 books that were taken out of the Bible by the Protestant Church. These 14 books are still in the Catholic Bible, but they were taken out by the Protestants because they said that these books were uh, too complicated for individuals to read, to understand. But this, nevertheless, is the King James Version of these 14 books. And among these, these books are older than the New Testament. The authors of the four Gospels had these books in their possession. How many and, times has the Bible been revised? Well, it, there's there are just lots and lots of books that are not in the Bible that were written at the time of Christ. And they just never worked their way into the canon, but Christians have always used them. And so these books are as old as Christianity itself. And among these books are the two books of the Maccabees, is the books of the Three Holy Children, the Book of Baruch, Ecclesiasticus, the Wisdom of Solomon, Bell and the Dragon. Those are still, aren't they? In huh? Solomon and the Ecclesiastes? No, no, these are not in the King James Version. These, what's in there is the Book of Ecclesiastes. This is Ecclesiasticus. Oh, I see. And what is in there is the Proverbs and of, of Solomon, but this is the Wisdom of Solomon. And among these books also is the two, oh, the Book of Esther, and the Book of Judith, and the Book of Tobit, and the two books of the prophet Esdras. And so these books are older than the New Testament. And these books were just found in the library, yeah, in the cave in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. And this is a set of 54 Gospels that had to be hidden by the early Christians because the emerging Roman Church persecuted anyone who had another set of books than the one they approved. So this has the Gospel of Thomas. It has the Gospel of Philip. It has... And these were saints? Yeah, Thomas was one of the apostles and Philip was one of the apostles. It has the Gospel of Mary. It has the book called The Acts of Peter and the Twelve Apostles. The Thunder, Perfect Mind. This is the book that tells us about God who is mother as well as father. How long have you been studying this? Uh, all about 25 years. And, and of course, and then, so all of these books are now showing up. And so there are, there are lots of books coming up out of the woodwork now, because the Divine Mother is now revealing all of her mysteries. So, How are you fitting in the, uh, the star line of the gold signs here? Well, just as there are, just as the mystery of Christ is revealed in the sun, you see? The very, the very last book of the Old Testament, which is the book of Malachi, says, what are they saying? Oh, for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud shall be burnt up, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son 
of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Well, the entire mystery of Christianity is understood in the mystery of the rising of the sun 2,000 years ago. And so just as the mystery of Christ is understood in the sun, so the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles are symbols of the 12 signs of the zodiac through which the sun passes day in and day out in its passage to the ends of the earth in the fullness of time. And this is why just as the sun rises in the east every morning, sets in the west every evening, so this age that we are living in began at the time of Passover and the time of Christ 2,000 years ago. We have now come the seven great epic days of Passover to where the sun is setting here at the western ends of the earth at this time of the year where we're celebrating the High Holy Days, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the days of Sukkah, dwelling in booths. Well, God told us that when we finally come to one particular time in history, if we were faithful to continue to observe our festivals, that when we came to this one time in history, the end of the age would come, we would find ourselves right here in the historical framework of the Tree of Life, as the mystery of Christ is now unfolding here in all the world's Study of the Book of Revelation from the standpoint of the ancient system of Jewish mysticism. So, you see, because in order to understand Christianity, we must understand Judaism. Because if we're not Judaism, then Christianity came. You know that. Sure. So, you have a. You have access to the computer? Around websites. Huh? I said around websites. Around uh, oh. websites. You write websites? Yes. Oh. So, of course you do. <laughs> Hi. You have access to a computer? What we're talking about is the mysteries of the world and the mystery of the tree of life and the fact that the Divine Mother, who is God, is now descending to us in our time. According to the scriptures, she's bringing forth a child. That child is an emerging state of planetary consciousness. And we're in the, what we're experiencing now is the birth throes, the contractions, the pains of a new age that is in the process of being born. And in order for that age to be born, this age has to come to its conclusion. And that's why we see the world now getting ready to go to war. That's why we see God, who dwells in the sun, in all unfolding reality, rising up in all of the powers of the East, getting ready to shape the Western world, because it's here in the Western world that that child is getting ready to be born. That's why God has brought souls from every race of humanity here to the West. This is why all the teachings of all the world's religions have come here and are concentrating here in the West. But God has given us time to learn each other's wisdom, learn to reverence each other and love one another and love the earth and the planet. And it's, so it's right here that not only is this wisdom coming Coming, that's a good, that's a good sign. <laughs> Not only is the light coming to perfection here, but the, dark, the darkness is also coming to perfection. And that's what we're now beginning. That's what we're now beginning to see is that the planet is getting ready to engage in a tremendous age-ending struggle between light and darkness. Sure. 
and uh, that's what's getting ready to unfold. And so we have to remind ourselves not to be shaken as we see it happen, because what is happening is happening for not only the good of the planet, but the, the good of every soul that is coming to spiritual understanding in our time. Everything is unfolding in the interest of the light, in the interest of righteousness. Even the wars that are coming are for the cleansing of the earth of warriors themselves. And we know, we know that we have come to the end of the age because the great dragon is appearing. And you see the continent of Europe? You see that Europe is a great big dragon with its mouth wide open? You see Italy is the tongue sticking out of the dragon's wide open mouth. Europe is the head, Scandinavia is the right limb, Asia Minor is the left limb, and all of Asia is the body and the tail of this enormous, great planetary creature. And the prophets told us that when the Divine Mother descended to us, and she is the Earth herself, she is all creation, she will begin to reveal the mysteries of her creation. And all of us who can see these things can then interpret them and overcome them. And of course, if this political system could see the dragon, it wouldn't be getting ready to send all the armies of the earth into the mouth of the dragon, which is the Balkan Peninsula, and into the heart of Asia to be devoured in the AIDS and the events of our time. And that's why we as God's children are not allowed to make war. We're not allowed to kill. We're not allowed to execute wrath or vengeance or vengeance or retribution. God has saved that for the great Antichrist, the sons of darkness, so he, they could be revealed in the last day and so that they could be brought to their conclusion. And that's what's happening. So, as the earth shapes. So I agree. So you're saying they're bad. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, so you're saying that the global war is inevitable. I'm saying what you see yeah. is reality, yeah. and it's inevitable, yes. Well, some people see reality, some people, you know, like these people, some people are here with these people. These people claim that they are, you know, messengers of God. And they are. They're messengers of darkness. Exactly. But yes. that's not, you know, exactly messenger of darkness. Yes. Like, they're not claiming. <laughs> they're, there are people that believe that they are not. There are people, most people don't. Believe That's why they're in darkness they because they don't even know right, that right. they are messengers so of the, darkness. How, so the, the, the idea is how there has been movements to try to you know to speak. Oh, sorry about that. To, to try to to try to explain that to people that these people are messengers of darkness. Well, that's what we're doing here. We're trying to yes. get into the conversation. No, but they were secular movements. I mean, what's as, that? They were secular movements. Oh yeah, yeah, socialists and yes, yeah, yeah, without. Well, not even. I mean, the Sandinista movement, the Nicaragua. Um, oh, yes. Yes. It's very beautiful. Yes. But these are also, in one level, agents of darkness, but in a sense, they are also instruments that God has used to begin to shine the light on the darkness to bring about our understanding yes. of, a, a, of injustice and oppression. And so you, you, you believe that... Uh, as the Maoists believe that the only way to, to have a just world is through, is through the next global war. Well, I myself will not partake in war, and all, none of God's yeah. children must partake of course, in war. We, that's why we're against it. Yes. Because it's not a, I mean, the only just war was World War II. No, that wasn't even just, because that was, no. that, you see, the Bible tells us that God is a God of war. Yes, that is his name. Adolf Hitler. When Adolf Hitler marched into or the center, you know. <laughs> there you go. There's, yeah. there's, there's a Hitler. Yes. <laughs> there ever was one. When Adolf Hitler marched into Vienna, Austria, the center of Europe, in 1938, well, the prophecies of God has told of His coming for thousands of years. This was the Angel of Death. This was Abaddon in the, the book of Revelation, ninth chapter. He says they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. And in the Hebrew, his name is Abaddon. In the Greek, hath his name Apollyon, which means the destroyer. He was defeated, though. He was defeated, 
because he only came for a short time. You're saying he was like a devil in the form of a man? He was an angel of death in the form of a, the the form form of a man. man. That's exactly right. He was raised up by God for the to bring about the judgments against the Western world and, of course, against God's elected people against the Jews because of their trans and because well according to this rabbi whose followers are sitting over in Brooklyn waiting for the Messiah according to Rabbi Yul Teitelbaum the Holocaust is the punishment for the sins of Zionism and for the sins of the Zionist what, what, what religion are you representing? Well I grew up as a Christian. I grew up in the Catholic Church. I was on my what denomination? Well, I grew up in the, as a Catholic. It's realism. However, Catholic. but as I matured in my faith, I began to realize that in order to be a true Christian, you must be a true Jew. And in order to be a true Jew, you must be a true Muslim. And you must be a true Buddhist. You must be a true Hindu. Because there is only one true religion. And that's the one God So what, what do you have to say against the Muslims? Since they don't believe in your religion. Of course they do. Yeah, all the Muslims in the world are waiting for the they return of Christ. Jesus Christ. Of course, they, there's three chapters in the Quran devoted to the coming of Jesus. But, if, but, but Jesus Christ might return to uh, an earth that's that's shadowed. The nuclear war. I mean, if we have another war, it's not going to be this. It could damage the atmosphere so much, or damage the. No, you don't understand. That, that A nuclear war is God. God. God is fire. The universe was yeah. created in fire. That is God. So any nuclear war will be a measured descent of God's fearful presence to destroy, knock down Hiroshima. But you know, it's, it's, we have to stop that. I thought you don't support war. That, I do not support war. Like what I am doing, you. I do not support war. But you cannot stop the Dalai Lama. Well, it's been done before. The Dalai Lama went stopped. to George Bush last week. In other countries, they've been stopped. They have, who's been stopped? The, the capitalists have been stopped in other countries. The capitalists? They've been, yeah, they've been submitted. I mean, well, the, what are you talking about? Armed insurrection? We're not allowed to engage in armed insurrection. Well, it's not about it's about We're children of God. We're getting ready to inherit. There's a question whether God created man or the man created God. God could be a myth that man created. Well, that's true. It could be so. Because there's no, really, there's no proof. Well, that's why I disagree. There is proof. God is known by the judgments he executes. And also, if you see the dragon, you can see God. Wow. If you can see... You can see God in your imagination no matter where you look. Well, that's true. Yeah. Well, you know what the scripture also says? Of course, anything can be self-fulfilling. The scripture says, only the foolish person says there is no God. It is good that you uh, view the world in terms of dialectical materialism. I mean, but uh, to, use, to use it in a way where... It's not helpful to get people conscious of it. It's not good. Not people uh, conscious no, of what? To get people conscious of dialectical materialism. Well, it, see, I'm not a, a I'm not a materialist. I well, think anybody who's stuck in the material realm is mine is locked well, in we're ignorance. Not materialists either, well, of course, if you're a communist, you are. I believe, you see, in the Soviet system. I believe that Russia has been raised well, Russia up. Russia wasn't communist. I mean, yeah. Russia and China are raised up by God to bring a judgment against the capitalist order so that those of us here in the West who are coming to spiritual perfection, who have put on the garments of righteousness and justice and pure pacifism can be delivered out of the darkness of the Are you, are you saying that God is sending atheists like the, like the Russia and China to Jews are eliminate God fearing people? God-fearing. If we were God-fearing, we wouldn't be making war. Well, so-called God-fearing people. Well, so, that's the problem. God is destroying all so-called God-fearing. But why is he using two atheist countries? Well, they don't so define religion. Because Christians are not allowed to make war. So he wouldn't raise up a, a nation of believers to kill. We're not allowed to kill. So we're in other words, he's using atheists to kill Christians and Jews and Muslims? No, he's using angels. It says here, Lenin was an angel. <laughs> Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that troubled you and to you who are troubled, 
rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Well, these angels ain't coming out of the sky. They're coming out of Russia. They're coming out of China. This is a different human order of things. They are operating they're operating at a different level of human consciousness. So so the people the people have gone and destroyed the, the, the twin towers. It's supposed to be angels of God? They, they're supposed to be angels of God? No. According to instead of instead of interpreting it to my own voice, look what Isaiah says. And there shall be upon every high mountain, which means every great nation, and upon every high hill, rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. This was ordained by the prophet Isaiah 2,700 years ago when he knew... Also by Nostradamus. Yes. When he knew that when we came to the end of the age, when the Antichrists appear in the earth, they would build the greatest, strongest empire that has ever existed in the face of the earth. And when they built it, all the prophets said, God would knock it down because he will have no other gods before him. So God who dwells in the sum of all living reality, last Tuesday morning began to bring the first throes of judgment against the Western world because the world is now going to war. And so, God, so, I have a question. So all God has to do, He wants to destroy this country. We have 50 states. Just put one angel of God in each state with a bag of contracts and release it. Just God a minute. Is not just a minute. In, just a minute. And release it. And that will destroy the whole country. God is not interested in destroying the people of the United States. That's what he wants. No, that's not what I said. I said what Isaiah said. God is interested in destroying the capitalist order, not the people who live here. He's interested in destroying those who make war. The United States of America is founded on genocide. This country, other people. Other, I have the, a question. The capitalists are 1%, or 2%, 98%. I'm not capitalist. That's this exactly country. right. Hard-working people. Exactly right. So, so that's you're why going God to tell is... me that God wants to punish 98 no. percent because a two percent you don't. capitalist. That I, I just said the opposite. That the God problem. is getting the ready to deliver 98 percent of the people. Not you and me. But why destroy the 98 percent? That don't. No, no, no. You're, you're talking without understanding. God is not destroying 98 percent of people. God is going to save 98 percent of the people by destroying the structure that has us in bondage. God is getting ready to bring the capitalist order down, not the mom and pops and the families that are living in Dubuque, Iowa, and over in Jersey City, and over in Queens. Are you, are God is getting ready to deliver working people out of this place. Are you a communist? I have a question. No, I'm a Christian. You're a Christian? Yeah. What, what, what makes you think that it's not possible for all people to have that level of consciousness? Because what, it sounds like it's, you're saying that there's there's no way you know, that people can have that. I mean, didn't the I Russian didn't people have a lot of, of that level of consciousness for them to be able to know that they were living in an oppressed system? Yes. Because obviously here, people, since they don't have the level of consciousness to know they're being oppressed. Yes. They don't have it. So it's possible that we can, that all people can have a level of consciousness and can get rid of yes. people. When Mikhail Gorbachev came to power in 1985 in Russia, yeah. he visited America. And that's why he went home. And when he, he wanted to restore capitalism, that was his agenda. No, he wasn't trying to restore capitalism. He was trying to release the energies of the Russian peasant class. So, because he knew that the true socialist, the true spiritual revolution, could not take place any other where but in the United States. And he was trying to release the energies of the Russian people to give them access to the things that we have here. Because he knew that only here in America could the true spiritual unfolding occur. Only in America is there the skills, the talents, the love of God, not the love of God, but the spiritual energy, the religious impulse. Only here could righteousness be born because only here do we have access 
to that which claims to be freedom and is not. Do you, do you believe that each religion right, channel, channels their prayers through their own different ways to the same God? Yes, absolutely. There is and only why, one true religion. And why talk about against other religions? I, I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm saying to be a true Christian means to be a true Buddhist, yeah. means to be a true Jew, I mean, New means York to be is a true yeah, Muslim. New York is a melting pot with yes. different religions, yes. different nationalities, different yes. races. Yes. But we all pray differently, in our own different way, Absolutely. to the same God, and we call them different names, Allah, whatever. Yes. Different names, but all goes to the same God. So there's no such thing as as the Catholics. They're going to go to heaven, and the uh, Non-Catholic believers are going to go Absolutely, to that's what we're saying here. We agree with you. That's exactly what we're saying. That there is only one true religion. It's the one God is creating, and it's the religion of love. And where some are coming as Buddhists, some as Jews, some as Christians, some as Muslims. So they're they're exactly. all in their own different way. Yes. To the same God. Absolutely. That's what we're saying here. That's exactly what we agree. All they're doing is following their own tradition. Not exactly. A, you know, Exactly. Just like the Tibetans over there are sitting on their knees and they're having their own way to pray. They have access to people. All right? They're the same God. They're the same God. Absolutely. That, right? that's, that's exactly right because we are pacifists here. We are. We are. Sure. Oh, yes. Don't get away from me tonight because I want to spend a little time. Are you in a hurry to get back? <laughs> Dr. Amani is. This is the heart of Islam, right here. <laughs> this is my teacher. He's an Islamic scholar. Right. He's also a Sufi saint. So did, did he father. teach you to respect every religion? Absolutely. I read that just, that All right. word is such good. Yeah, it's very good. I look at it like this. We consider ourselves, all of us. Nobody, no religion is no, no, so I'm saying let's take all of us, whatever religion one person prays to a rock, one person prays to that. But right. let's assume that we are all sitting around the round table, okay? In the center is the universal truth, God. I, as a Muslim, sit here, right? But if I pray to that God that you see, you as a Christian, or a Joe, or whatever we are, we all focus on that central fact, the universal God, and we pray to Him. Then we are okay, but the problem is, unfortunately, and sometimes we forget about God and we look at each other and we say, you're wrong. You say the problem is myself, that we all use I God as a pretext to really start wars in the name of God. Yeah, it's been going on for thousands of years. Yeah, it's been going on for thousands of years. Only thousands of years ago, we had primitive weapons so we couldn't destroy each other. Now, with the weapons that we have, the God is going to get mad at everybody and he's going to just destroy the whole world. That's what I'm saying. Because if we have not forgotten about God, no matter what way we go, it's a tax or money. When we, we, we look for him, we look at the mountain, you know, I said an example, it's a metaphor. There are many paths to climb the mountain, right? But if somebody doesn't know that at the peak of the mountain there is a truth that he's, he or she is looking for, then we accuse the other one of traveling on the wrong path. As long as we learn that one, that all paths lead to God. All. You say that was a problem when Jesus came. And it goes both ways. Here in America, we look at CNN, we look at TV, and they get the impression that not the terrorists, but the Muslim religion look at Christians as infidels. As infidels. This is the picture that we get. It might not be, but that's the picture we get. This is why, yeah, you know, and at the same time, we all think that our religion is the right religion, the other religion is the wrong religion, to the point where we destroy each other over religion. And now, 
Yeah, and now all it takes is one person to no, 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 no. destroy a whole set. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, in the name of God. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I saw it. I did know it's one person. But I think I'm sure it was just a little bit going up. Is that your thing? Okay. He can poison it. And there's a lot of that stuff on it. Oh, the other daughter's horse is on each side. This is what we have. St. Martin, you know, was a very, um, there's two of them, there's two of St. Martin. Well, there was St. Martin of Tours, who was a Roman soldier, who all of a sudden had a vision of Christ, laid down his weapons and never fought again. He became uh, sort of like the foundation for all pacifism after that in the Celtic uh, state of mind. He was a Celtic uh, Celt.